Today we will be discussing the trigeminal nerve. We have already discussed two of the branches, V1, the ophthalmic branch, the ophthalmic nerve, and V2, which is the maxillary nerve. Today we will be talking about V3, which is the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve V3 is the largest division, it's the only mixed division. This has two roots, a large sensory root and a smaller motor root. This nerve exits the skull through the foramen ovale. Both motor and sensory roots leave the skull through this foramen, but do not unite as one nerve trunk until they are outside the skull. So again, they do not do not unite as one nerve trunk until they are outside of the skull. Here are the branches we will be talking about. The auriculotemporal, the lingual, the inferior alveola, also known as the IA, the mylohyoid nerve, the mental nerve, and the buccal nerve. Let's talk about the anatomy of the mandibular nerve. The sensory and motor nerve roots form a common nerve trunk just beyond the foramen ovale. There are several small branches off the common trunk. There is the meningeal, which is a sensory branch, which supplies the meninges. Do you remember what the meninges are? Those are the three membranes enclosing the brain and the spinal cord. So the meningeal branch turns upward and passes through the foramen spinosum. And there are also motor branches, which are to the medial pterygoid muscle and to two tensor muscles of the oropharynx. It is the tensor villi palatini and the tensor tympani. I wouldn't get bogged down on what two muscles those are. Again, when we talk about the anatomy of the mandibular nerve, beyond the common trunk, V3 divides into two divisions, a smaller anterior division and a large posterior division. In the small anterior division, there is one afferent, which is a sensory branch, and that is the long buccal nerve. And then there are three efferent motor branches, which innervate the remaining muscles of mastication. In the large posterior division, there are three afferent branches, so that would be sensory, to the tongue, temporal mandibular joint, and the mandibular teeth. Is also one efferent branch, so that would be motor, and that is to the mylohyoid muscle. Remember, the mylohyoid muscle forms the floor of the mouth and the anterior belly of the digastric. It's really not important to remember is this the anterior division or the posterior division. You just need to know the various branches. So again, here's the anterior division of V3, and here's the posterior division of the mandibular nerve. Okay, so when we talk about the efferent or motor branches of the anterior division of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, we talk about the mesoteric nerve. Given its name, it would make sense that it would supply the masseter muscle. The deep temporal nerves supply the temporalis muscle. Now remember, these are motor nerves. And the lateral pterygoid nerve supplies the lateral pterygoid muscle. The long buccal nerve is a sensory nerve. Sometimes you'll hear it called the buccal nerve. 
This passes between the two heads of the lateral pterygoid muscle. It descends inferiorly and anteriorly on the medial of the ramus. Then it crosses over to the anterior border of the ramus behind the molars. This particular nerve enters the cheek through the buccinator muscle but does not supply sensation to the buccinator muscle. The facial nerve does that. So there's, again, long buccal nerve, also called the buccal nerve. And notice how it crosses over to the anterior. The shaded area is the area in which it innervates. So the areas supplied by the long buccal nerve are the skin of the cheek, the buccal mucous membranes, the buccal gingiva of the mandibular molars. This nerve must be anesthetized when soft tissue in this area is being manipulated. So think about if you were doing some deep scaling in that area in the mandibular molars. You must anesthetize this area for patient comfort. If we talk about the posterior divisions of V3, I had mentioned before there are three afferent branches. The auriculotemporal nerve, I believe you've heard that before when we were talking about the TMJ. The lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve. Also we'll hear that called the IA nerve. It also has one efferent branch, so it's motor branch, and that is the milo to the mylohyoid nerve. So the auriculotemporal nerve, general sensation provides general sensation to the parotid gland and also to the TMJ and skin of the ear and the temporal region. Remember that this is a sensory nerve. Another sensory nerve is the lingual nerve which runs downward and forward along the medial of the ramus, just anterior medial to the IA nerve. This is often anesthetized along with the inferior alveolar nerve. This joins together with the coda tympani branch of the facial nerve. Fibers from both of these are intertwined. So oftentimes when you anesthetize the lingual nerve, it, will, it also anesthetizes the facial nerve at this point. The lingual nerve enters the mouth at the base of the tongue. So the lingual nerve, these branches enter the floor of the mouth and the body of the tongue. They also enter the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. It terminates in the lingual gingiva of the mandible. Areas supplied by the lingual nerve are general sensation to the body of the tongue, anterior two-thirds, again remember that this is a sensory nerve, the lingual gingiva of the mandibular teeth, and general sensation to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Also the mucosa of the floor of the mouth. And when we talk about the IA nerve, the inferior L viola nerve. This descends downward and forward between the sphenomandibular ligament. Remember when we studied the TMJ we learned about the sphenomandibular lig ligament and the medial aspect of the ramus. It is lateral and posterior to the lingual nerve. This enters the mandible at the mandibular foramen and travels through the mandibular canal. The inferior alveolar artery and vein also enter here at the mandibular foramen. So keep in mind when we give an IA injection, when you're anesthetizing the inferior alveolar nerve, you have to be careful not to inject the anesthesia into the artery and vein in that area. So there are ways of making sure that you're not into the blood stream. So again the inferior alveolar nerve divides into two terminal branches at the mental foramen. The mental nerve and the incisive nerve. So 
that shows you the IA nerve. The mental nerve, it comes out of the mental foramen. And remember I had mentioned in the past that if a nerve exits a foramen, it is going to supply soft tissue in the oral cavity. So notice how that mental nerve is coming out of the foramen. So that is going to supply the chin area, the soft tissue. If a nerve enters the foramen, as the IA nerve does when it enters the mandibular foramen, it is going to supply pulp, bone, and periodontal structures. Here's just another view. The IA nerve gives off dental plexus to mandibular molars and second premolars. This supplies the pulp and the periodontium. The buccal gingiva over the molars is supplied by the long buccal nerve. So the mental nerve exits the mandible at the mental foramen. This supplies the skin of the chin, skin and mucous membranes of the lower lip. The incisive nerve, so the IA travels down, it divides into the mental nerve, which comes out the mental foramen, or it continues along that path and it remains in the mandible, called the incisive nerve, and this supplies dental plexus to the mandibular first premolars and the anterior teeth, which includes the pulp, bone, and buccal gingiva. Remember I had mentioned about V1 and V2, actually it would be more specifically V2. The incisive canal is where the nasobuccal nerve, excuse me, the nasopalatal nerve comes out. This is where it doesn't make sense. The in, you would think that the incisive nerve should be up there, but it is not. The incisive nerve is down here, and the nasopalatine nerve exits through the incisive foramen. So the incisive nerve just remains within the mandible. Here's the mental foramen. So if we think about the mandibular nerve supply, the IA nerve branches, which are the mental nerve, comes out the mental foramen and supplies the skin of the chin, and the incisive nerve, which remains in the mandible. There's the lingual nerve and the long buccal nerve. We talk about the mylohyoid nerve, it would stand to reason that it would supply the mylohyoid muscle. It also supplies the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. This is the only efferent nerve of the posterior division of V2. This branches off just before the inferior alveolar nerve enters the mandible. So if we think about V3, it's both sensory and motor. Remember V1 and V2 are only sensory. It leaves the skull through the foramen ovale. Remember, man loves ovaries. It enters the mandible through the mandibular foramen. It includes muscles of mastication, which are motor, and the lower teeth, which are sensory, so which includes pain. We review again the anterior division in, innervates the, t the temporalis, masseter, medial, and lateral pterygoid muscles. The long buccal nerve innervates the buccal gingiva to the mental foramen and cheek. Posterior division is the IA, which is the lower teeth, it's called the incisive after the mental foramen. The mental nerve innervates the buccal gingiva from the mental foramen forward, the chin and the lower lip. The lingual 
supplies the floor of the mouth, lingual gingiva, and the anterior of the tongue. So if you look at these branches of the trigeminal nerve, the yellow are, the, uh, are some of the ophthalmic branches, red, maxillary, green, mandibular. These represent supraorbital, lacrimal, zygomatico-temporal, zygomatico-facial, infraorbital, long buccal, mental, supratrochlea, infratrochlea, and the nasociliary.